Thank you for joining us this morning at Trinity Episcopal Church in Marshall, Michigan for our live stream only of the third week in Lent. You'll notice I'm not wearing my mask. There are not very many of us in the building. And those of us who are here are far enough away from each other that we're going to go without masks today. Thank you again for joining us. And please join me in listening to the prelude played by Randy Turner. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, 
but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. M685, The Rock of Ages. about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness 
is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn 574. Before thy throne, O God, we kneel. reading from the Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. 
He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume you. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome again to Trinity. I am Deacon Wendy Pearson. You'll notice that Mother Ann is still on her week of educational retreat, um, time with family, well-deserved rest from this past year. So it is my joy to offer to you some thoughts on this Gospel of John, some ideas about what happens when we come to a T in the road when you can only go one way or the other, left or right, no other options. But I like what if. What if you came to that T and you scooted around that big yellow arrow sign and drove right into the field? What if you turned around and went back where you came from? What if you put yourself in park and never moved again? If there were kids here, I hope there'd be one in the front who said, but what if, what if your car could fly and you went straight up in the air? What if? Now any logical adult person is going to recognize that even though these are all options, not all of them are good options, or safe, or legal, or at least not yet even possible. But they are options. How do we choose the best option? Well, we could lean on people who taught us best driving practices. We can consider other drivers on the road. And look and see if there's any cops around. What about asking the question, what would Jesus do? You remember that saying, right? We had bracelets and t-shirts and bumper stickers. I'd like to tweak it just a little bit and have us consider instead asking the question, what did Jesus do? Fortunately for us, Scripture is full of examples of exactly what Jesus did in a great number of instances. Now, as far as driving up to a T in the road, aside from that old joke, what car did Jesus drive? A Honda, because he and the disciples were all in one accord. Well, we, we'll just use our imaginations about what kind of driver Jesus would be. But we do know that Jesus sees things through a filter that God designed. And that offers us the chance to see things the way God does, to make choices that please God. So what happened when Jesus walked in to the center of a holy gathering place, saw things going on that had him questioning are these good options? Is this safe? Is this even legal? 
What did Jesus do? Jesus looked at that big yellow sign and drove right into the table. He walked up to those tables and flipped them over. Jesus saw the wastefulness of the sellers, the abuse surrounding issues of trust, of good finances, of sacred space and animals. And then he got mad and flipped things over. This temple isn't just any little gathering place for religious folks. This is the center of community life. This is the place to experience God, to give sacrifice for celebration, sacrifice for mourning losses, a place for debating truth, a place to leave your sins behind you when you leave the holy ground. People were expected to offer animals as sacrifice, so it's logical to have animals for sale if you weren't able to bring one with you, especially if your journey was long. However, the courts were becoming more and more focused on commerce and trade and profits, P-R-O-F-I-T-S. And the temple grounds were less and less about worship and holiness and community and prophets, P R O P H E T S. We don't need to ask, what would Jesus do? Because we just read it. And what did Jesus do? We know he didn't walk to one side and just ignore it, we know he didn't turn to the other side and participate in it. He drove straight ahead, and he drove them straight out of the temple. We don't usually like to think of Jesus, meek and mild, as an angry man. Maybe we could stretch our imaginations to a Jesus full of righteous indignation. The disciples called their, recalled their scripture and said it was zeal that consumed Jesus. Whatever it was, it's a difficult thing to pinpoint because it's a seldom reported facet of Jesus' humanity, a facet the disciples maybe saw more often. But the others who were there questioned Jesus, people whose loyalty could also be questioned. These were people who were making the temple a marketplace certainly not the original intent of the temple. We can be hopeful that it just evolved that way unintentionally, but we also can't rule out the possibility of the temptations of greed and dishonesty that took over people who were there. We are told that these people who don't understand who Jesus really is stopped him asked him what's going on, wanted to know. Who says you have something to say about this? They don't see the connection that Jesus is the temple. Even some of the disciples have to wait until after the resurrection. John's gospel calls it vindication to understand and believe what they just saw. They just saw Jesus go past that yellow sign and create a whole new road to follow. What a shock. And then we're supposed to be like that? We're supposed to follow this example? How does that work? It helps that we have instructors who have voices we can trust, prophets in our own time. One such voice is that of Dr. Verna Dozier. She wrote, Temptation stories point to Jesus' absolute commitment to the vision of God above every other commitment. A temple that put best practices in place. A 
temple that was safe and healthy for all to attend. A temple that took in sin and sent out love. Jesus embodies God's temple and will not allow corruption within it. There's effort involved in avoiding corruption. Sometimes it would just feel easier to put your car in park and never move. It takes work, a vision for the future, to apply for permits, to do surveys, to do land studies. They're all needed to create a new road. But what did Jesus do? showed us that vision, changed the direction of the temple, changed the environment. And that's what this gospel story, the temple of Jesus' body, is all about. That's our example to follow because we can be certain that what Jesus did says volumes about what we are supposed to be doing. Jesus wasn't celebrated for overturning tables and pouring money on the floor and driving people and animals out of the temple. But that's what Jesus did because the vision God has for God's kingdom is so very different from the kingdoms humans have put in place for themselves to the exclusion of God. And that reality stings me because I've given in to that temptation. I put myself in park, I've turned around and gone home. I've wished I could simply fly away where others couldn't find me. Those are the times I didn't speak up against abuse. Those times I didn't offer compassion to a victim. Those times I didn't ask, what did Jesus do in a given situation? I only did what I wanted to do. I don't think Jesus is asking us to get mad and overturn tables. I do think what Jesus did reminds us that he himself is the temple of God. We are being given a choice to allow sacrifice to become a profit-making experience and become deceitful to God and to our faith. We're given a choice to build a better community, to support those who drive this journey with us. And sometimes the T in the road isn't that obvious. Sometimes there's good choices in every direction. When I get to that T in the road and I'm not sure I like any of the options that surround me, I can try to remember to ask, what did Jesus do? And to remember that even when he had to upset the status quo, Jesus was absolutely committed to God's vision for the world. And that is something I can do too. Amen. continue to affirm our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of your glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our standing committee, our clergy, and all our people. Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard. Your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your Son. And grant that we may show the power of your love to all among whom we live. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our parish prayer list, we pray for Dolores, Joe, Suzanne, Mary, Mary Ellen, Lauren, David, Robin, Carlos, Dave, Debbie, Chuck, Ann, Julie, Barb, Audra, Lee, Ruth, Jane, Dave and Gloria, Jim, Tom, John, Lori, Alec, Brittany, Terry, Bryce, Cassandra and family, Jim and family, the family of Colleen Pearson, the Humiston family, Gary, Leslie, and Joey's family. We pray for all who are ill, for their families, and for those who are caring for them. We pray for the residents and staff of our local nursing homes and hospices and hospitals. We pray for all essential workers. We pray for our leaders, our vestry, and our rector, the standing committees of the dioceses of Western Michigan and Eastern Michigan, Skip, our assisting bishop, Joe, our mayor, Gretchen, our governor, and Joe, our president. We pray for all who have died, especially Colleen, Bob, Tom, and Joey. 
Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Please add your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hymn 140, Wilt Thou Forgive? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit 
the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.